Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. I'm going to try to pay attention to my tone of voice today as to not get some certain animals excited in the background. There we go. Training's already starting. Hang on. Just got a notification that I went live. working with um, the birds to um, get them used to my glasses because I was told I need to start wearing them more as I age. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Um, this is a live stream. I have every Sunday morning, as long as I'm not traveling, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, yeah, and... Believe it or not, yesterday was our four-year anniversary of live streaming Coffee with the Critters every Sunday morning. So for four years, I've been getting up at 5 a.m. on Sunday mornings <laughs> um, to bring this information to you. Good morning, everybody. Let's see. We've got Brittany, Elaine, Anna, Chris, Eva, Tim, Jeannie, um, Quentin, Melinda, Shelly. Hey, good morning, everybody. Kramer in the house. Susie Chen. Yeah, good morning. Adrienne, good morning. Sandy and Jennifer. Um, so we've been live streaming every Sunday morning for four years. Um, I started this four years ago on Periscope, and then Facebook Live came out, and I was like, see a Periscope, heading over to um, Facebook Live. But um, what was interesting about Periscope, that's through Twitter, boy, I reached a whole new audience that I didn't even know existed, um, which was the importance of um, Parrots Are Us, which is in the house this morning. Um her and I did a live stream yesterday on Instagram. It's actually on my Instagram page because there was complications. Imagine that, the lovely world of technology. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And I showed a lot of things in that live stream that I don't usually show. Um, so check it out. We're in the process of saving it to our Instagram page. And we're going to... Uh, post it here on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page. Yes. Hey, Krista, Daphne, Tammy, Kimberly, um, Penny. Yes. So um, thanks for the congratulations and the happy anniversaries. Yeah. There is so much going on here right now. Um, a lot of intended and unintended. Hang on. I got to grab my coffee. So for the past two weeks I've been drinking out of my Sam mug. Good morning, Milo. I've been drinking out of my Sam mug, but it's dirty because I drank out of it last night. So today I bring you our Rocky mug that says Rocky, Rocky Valentine. Anyways, um, before I get started, yeah, let's make this interactive. And if anybody would like to come on with me, let me know. Um, oh, where was I going with that? Um, a lot going on here. Oh, I know what I was going to say. We're getting ready to have another mug designed. Let us know which animal you think should be next. So, so far we have Milo, the mini pig, that's with us. We have Snow, our deaf and blind dog. We have yours truly, Captain Caveman back here, um, Rico, Rocky, and Sam. So who do we have left? <laughs> Suki, Ali, yeah, I'm talking to you, Coco, Levi, and Quincy. Oh, well, and Cello. Yes, you're in your PJs. Yeah, um, so I asked, Susie says she's drinking out of her Rico mug this morning. Um, I asked a couple of weeks ago, since this is Coffee with the Critters, send us your photo of your mugs or your mugs with your animals. Um, Diane Hyde sent me one a couple of weeks ago, but she texted it to me, so I couldn't find it. Um, and I will post them 
here in Coffee with the Critters. Oops. Where is Vulture? Yeah. The only thing is Willie does not belong to us. She belongs to nature's nursery. So I would love to find out a way to have that all go through, that it, all that's donated to nature's nursery. Um, I didn't forget about Murray. Um, and Coco! He uh, got a picture of him coming up. Um, so let's go ahead and get this started. So some of the announcements that I'm going to make are a little bird heavy um, in the beginning, but then we're going to move right into enrichment, and I have some um, photos to share with you guys. These are some photos. Some of these photos I've never shared before um, about enrichment, uh, our behavior modification plans. Enrichment should be a part of every behavior modification plan. Um, I have myself on a behavior modification plan right now. I sure do to help redirect my attention and my focus. And there's several things involved in that. Okay, so let's get started. A little bird heavy in the beginning before we move into our topic. So here we have, let me change the screen. Um, I have been asked to collaborate um, with uh, an organization that just launched on Friday evening, C4AW, stands for Collaboration for Avian Wellness. Um, you can find their website, hang on, it shows it uh, right there, but I'm going to post it right here. So if you are into um, keeping birds, um, and Kramer, feel, feel um Go ahead and post anything additional here, and I'll put it up on the feed. Um, hi, Rico. C4AW, um, Collaboration for Avian Wellness. It is a, a collaboration where if you go to their website, um, you go to their website, you can um, find um, the, the, the team that's collaborating here. Let me get this off here. Um, from all aspects of avian wellness, and that's um, nutrition, you'll see uh, the different uh, organizations in there um, where we all support each other and believe in the work of each other for the all-around wellness of, of birds, focusing on parrots, but definitely not limited to. Definitely not limited to. Thank you, Tim. You're awesome. Tim is a, uh, a big supporter of ours here on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page. So thank you for posting that. Um, so you'll see in there, um, I'm trying to, I couldn't pull up the and share the, the feed here, but you have nutrition. Um, and maybe, you know what? Kramer, what I'm thinking is maybe we do a coffee with the critters with everybody from C4AW because there's a lot of great information in there from nutrition, behavior, training, uh, conservation, um, shelter work, um, and so much more. If you go to their website, you can see that right now. And anybody that's on that website right now, let me know. Um, so Kramer says... Um, Four tenants, nutrition, behavior, enrichment, and health. And they all come together for the, uh, the betterment and keeping of birds. All right. Let's do that, Kramer. If you shoot me a message, that will remind me to get that scheduled after this live stream. And maybe we bring in, because um, we, C4AW, everybody that's involved got together for a group discussion. I don't know, my days are getting mixed up, a week or so ago, and um, got to talk to everybody. Let's do a coffee with the critters with C4AW and announce this to, yeah, yeah, great. Okay, let's do it. Um, anything else you wanted to say about C4A did? This is such an exciting announcement. Yeah. So if I posted it on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page on Friday evening, um, I'm going to start sprinkling it through 
my social media. If you guys want to share, feel free to share. So this couldn't come at a better time because, oh, I'll, I'll talk about that next. <laughs> okay, some exciting news. Uh, guess what I have? Uh huh. I have several commercials of Rocky's clip um, in my email. Mm -hmm. And I got to view them all the other day. Um, it is not launched yet, but uh, it's not Rocky's commercial. <laughs> Rocky's just in it. <laughs> um, I am also going to schedule an upcoming Coffee with the Critters with um, the company in which um, Rocky's is in the commercial. And I'm going to try to get together with the production company too because they were a lot of fun. The production company was a lot of fun. That was such great enrichment for Rocky that so much that I'm going to start getting him harness trained, which we are getting ready to live stream in the Parrot Project, how to harness train in addition to so much more. Jason Crean is going to be on with us live streaming tomorrow night. I'll get that event posted in um, the Parrot Project, uh, but I'm getting Rocky harness trained so I can start taking him out on more functions because he loved it. Okay, several of you know um, we lo recently lost Sam. Thank you for that distraction. Yes, as soon as the commercial's out, I will let you all know, and I will start posting the clips of the commercials that I have. Okay, um, so several of you know, um, great, Heather. Heather has a question for Jason tomorrow. We have a lot of questions for Jason tomorrow night about nutrition. We're going to be f focusing on inflammation and how um, nutrition can help with inflammation. That can help with people, too, and any other animal. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, Julie. So many of you know that we recently lost Sam. Um, I will be having a live stream on that um, soon. That's what today's topic is going to be. I think it's too soon for me to talk about. Um, but something I wanted to tell you, there's a lot of detail in this and some of it I need to share. So I'm negatively reinforcing myself to get it out there fast so I don't forget to share some very important information that happened. Okay, so um, this was, somebody drew this for me. And um, I'm going to be starting, yes, hey, Donald, good morning, everybody. I'm going to be starting a nonprofit. Um, this is on my personal Facebook page. I am starting it. It's already in motion. Um, and it will be geared towards people in desperate need of help with parrots and just doing better. Okay. Um, because a lot of what happened with Sam was probably just, um, not knowing how to do better years ago. Aviculture has made so many leaps forward. Um, so I've gotten in touch with my attorney. My bank and my CPA were doing a lot of work last week making this happen fast. Um, so I wanted to let you know that I had a fundraiser on my personal Facebook page for a bird um, in quick, fast need. Uh, a lot of people wanting help, and I put together a fundraiser asking um, $500 to cover fuel costs and ended up raising over $1,700. Uh, the people that went on the legs of that trip um, refused to take the money I had raised and said, put it back into the need of another bird, and we are doing that. We're working hard behind the scenes on that, okay? Okay. Um, Thank you. All right, let's get started on our topic. Um, <clears throat> all right, so 
enrichment should be a part of every behavior modification plan. Behavior modification, we have several behavior modification plans in place here. Um, behavior modification is a behavior change plan. When you see a behavior issue and that behavior needs to be changed, changed and address, addressed. Um, thanks, Katie. Thank you all. Um, Sorry, just reading through your messages, your posts. Um, so we have, I mean, we're called the Animal Behavior Center for a reason, all right? It's because usually animals here coming to us have behavior issues. Um, so once I start putting a behavior modification plan in place, I'm looking at what the animal knows how to do, what it doesn't know how to do, that it needs to know how to do to empower their lives in our care. Um, I love working with exotics of every kind. And um, like I said in my presentation in Montreal, hmm, when was that? It seems like that was five years ago. <laughs> that was last month. Um, studies show that most animals they said in captivity. Every animal in our care is in captivity. Whether it's a dog or a bird or a pig, it has walls up, has restrictions. Um, those, thank you, Tim. Thank you, everybody. Stop being so nice or I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> so, you stop looking at me like that too. Um, animals in our care, studies show that animals in our care seriously lack um, in complexities in their environment. <laughs> um, and they do. I'm here to tell you they do. And that's what we, there's a talk I give called the three C's. Choice, control, and complexity. These need to be involved in several different aspects of um, animals in our care. Um, with the three C's, choice, control, and complexity, that can be incorporated through training. Um, that can be incorporated in socialization, which socialization um, studies show is one of the most complex forms of enrichment for an animal. And I agree. Um, and we can do that through enrichment. Um, and enrichment is an arousal of the senses. Anything that keeps that animal mentally and physically engaged, um, incorporating choice, control, and complexity. <laughs> hey, Jill. Got my necklace on. Um, Jill sent me this necklace, this octopus necklace as a gift. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, so... Um, so we've got somebody in here from Montreal. Hi, any advice on how to harness train? When did you come to Montreal and how can I come, how come I didn't see you? Um, it was a group of professional dog trainers that brought me to Montreal. Um, that was a, or February 2nd and 3rd, I believe. But, um, we're talking about harness training right now in the Parrot Project, so take a look at the Parrot Project. If anybody wants to post a link to the Parrot Project so people can see what we're talking about, I'd appreciate that. Um, so here's an example of Tickle Rocky Joseph. Yeah. Rocky's on a new training perch that we put in there yesterday. Um, we need to make training easy and fun for both the animal and for both the animal, great collaboration here too, um, for the animal and for us. Because if the training, and like I, you hear me say, that animal can see, hear, smell, or feel you, you are training it whether you realize it or not. 
Um, and the misuse of attention as a reinforcer is the number one reason animals lose their homes. And the number one reason shelters are overflowing. Um, so if we make the training easy for us to incorporate, we will train more, all right? That's why I train um, when I knew, need to do um, husbandry grooming behaviors on my mammals. That would be Milo the pig and our three dogs. I like it up on a table because um, it's easy for me to get to their feet, to get to their eyes, to get to their ears, and to get to their butt, um, get to their toenails. If I make it easy for me, I'm more likely to do it. So where my husbandry behaviors training starts is teaching an animal, a mammal, to climb a ramp to a table. Wow. All right? And maybe I show some of that work this morning with um, Milo. All right? So here is Molly. She came to us for training, I can't remember, a couple years ago. And right now I am working in level our level two membership to bring in another species of animal I've never worked with before. Then I live stream it in level two and show people how I approach something that I know nothing about. Um, we also have our book review going on in level two right now. And on April 16th, we're bringing in the geneticist and scientist, uh, Jessica Heckman. Um, into level two for an interview because um, she worked in Russia and some of these field studies. Okay. Um, so when we brought Molly here, the first thing I did, watch what she moved to, watch what she moved away from. And we noticed she wasn't using her hands very much and I wanted to get her using her hands. I have this in a presentation, all the video of what I was doing, shaping her to use her hands. So here's a piece of enrichment. She loved, you're full of it this morning. She loved, hey you, There's some enrichment observation happening right beside me with Milo. See if I can show you without disconnecting. This is what I look for. Well, he was just right standing right underneath there, okay? So he's got his butt up against it now. Milo likes his butt rubbed. So I look at why is this happening? And when his butt is rubbed, his mohawk goes up. Um, he enjoys that sensation um, and his mohawk is going up right now. So a pig's hair is very coarse and I'm sure when they feel something rub up along their back, um, it, it's just, it's something for them to do in an enclosure that may not have as much choice. So we design hanging enrichment that at a level where Milo can get underneath. Um, we uh, Also, he likes to scratch, so we could put things out where he could scratch himself on. Um, okay, so get this back up here. Um, Enrichment involves choice, control, and complexity in an animal's environment. And you hear me say, in order to, and I said this in the live stream I did yesterday with Parrots R Us. Yes, thank you, Julie, it's stimulating. I was fighting for my words. Um, if you want to change a behavior, no matter what the animal, you need to find a replacement behavior for it. If you do not, you're likely to reinforce the very be undesired behavior that you're trying to change. Um, I took this photo last week of um, Quincy. We made, I'm just noticing I'm missing a photo. Oh no, it might be coming up. Um, we made some serious changes here in this room about a week and a half ago to redirect a lot of behavior. Um, and I noticed that I was not paying as much attention to my mammals and they were feel I could see behavior changes due to that. And it was behavior I didn't want to see. I started seeing uh, resource guarding increasing. Um, and that was due to, they had to find their own forms of enrichment because I wasn't providing it. 
or I wasn't providing it in the level of complexity that I usually do. So I was modifying the play gym that's right above my head. Um, and I was up on that ladder and I came down and Quincy's just sitting there staring at me. And I was just like, I am so sorry, you know? So I stood up and just started training her. I was like, what do we want to train? So I trained her through target training. Um, I trained her to put her front two feet on this ladder. And then I trained to stay. Um, so I trained her to touch her foot to my hand. That's a target. I trained her to touch her foot to my hand. And this was all in like maybe three really fast training sessions. The training sessions lasted maybe a minute and a half each. I trained her to touch her foot to my hand. And this is what Deb Jones and I talk a lot about in our workshops. Mechanics. How are you, do you want this behavior? How are you going to get it? Um, so thanks, Melinda. Um, so a lot of times I'm like, okay, I, I need her feet on this ladder. How am I going to get it? So you have to think it through. And this is why target training is so important. You can control an animal where it goes through target training. Um, target training can get very complex. So start now with those simple beak, foot, nose, and butt targets. All right. Once you start seeing how powerful a target is, and we talked about this in the live stream yesterday, you can get in, you can have safe control over your environment and the animals in it. Um, so I trained a foot target. I sat there real quick, trained her to touch her paw to my hand, which I had never done before. Then I started transferring my hand over to the rung of the ladder. So she was reaching to touch my hand. And then I slowly started fading my hand foot target to a, a prompt where I was pointing to the rung and then she would put one foot on. Um, and then I used applied behavior analysis to get her to put two feet on. Okay, I rearranged my environment to get the behavior I needed, which was I held, I ended up holding the treat high above the rungs. So I was luring and she had to put two feet on to get up to get it and then that's when it's all about the effective use of timing bridging and high rates of reinforcement boom 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 treats just fell from the sky um you just did one from my ipad i will post it great okay well, let's move on i showed this video in montreal when we were talking about abnormal repetitive behaviors okay there are so many abnormal repetitive behaviors animals can develop. We just posted this somewhere and somebody was mentioning last night about their cat because abnormal repetitive behaviors, if it's not uh, genetic or neuro neurological, it's most likely behavior, okay? Um, when I see abnormal repetitive behaviors such as animals running in circles, um, doing the same repetitive motion. You see that in a lot of bear enclosures. And from what I have learned, you see that in a lot of rhinoceros enclosures. Um, we were talking about this in Montreal with someone um, with a walrus. Okay. Um, when I see abnormal repetitive behaviors and we have them here, you're likely to see them very high rates with cocoa. Um, it's usually developed out of a lack of um, a lack of enrichment, a lack of jobs to do. There's another presentation I give said, called "Work is not a four-letter word." Give your job, your animals, a job to do. We have to have jobs to do. If we do not have jobs to do, we get very bored. When humans get very bored, humans get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> humans get arrested. <laughs> um, so it's important to redirect behavior through enrichment. This is a video I showed of teaching complexity um, with a crow. We all know the studies that are out there showing the high levels of intelligence of corvids, your crows, your ravens, your jackdaws, magpies, jays, um, rooks. Um, so what we did what I don't want here in the center 
is a bored Corbin. Um, he starts getting bored. And I saw, this is Kronos, I saw Kronos starting to do this. If he starts to get bored, he forms his own enrichment. And it was kind of cool to watch, but I was like, this is going to turn into a behavior issue really fast. We need to change this. What he was doing was he would lure, um, he would take pieces of food that he cached, meaning he was hitting, he was hiding to get at a later date. He was taking pieces of food and pushing it underneath the cage bars out just far enough to lure the mammals over to get that food. And then they would come over, he would grab the food back and, and try to peck them through the cage bars. That cannot happen here. Um, and I sat there and I was like, why are the dogs over by the crow cage? And I'm sitting there looking and I was watching Kronos and I was like, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> bump up the level of complexity in this, in this crow's enclosure right now. <laughs> um, but what we did is in this, let me see if I can make this larger for you guys. In this seagrass mat, in the middle of it, and we had to shape this level of complexity, we put, do we have a squirrel on the roof? What we did was we rolled up pine nuts inside of a paper cone cup. We rolled it up in the seagrass mat. We tied it shut um, and we shaped the behavior that uh, he could get it from the seagrass mat. Once he knew it, then that seagrass mat is a conditioned reinforcer, meaning because it's been paired with the pine nuts, when he sees the seagrass mat, he knows what's inside. So we bumped up the level of complexity um, by doing this. We hung it in the middle of the cage. And all of a sudden, he was no longer interested in the mammals. His attention was redirected to that seagrass mat. My point if you want a behavior to change, you need to replace it with another behavior. And this is how we did it through enrichment and foraging. Okay. Um, I am here to tell you that I agree that most animals under our care seriously lack problem solving skills. Serious. Okay. We are constantly building levels of complexity here. If you don't, you're likely to see uh, behavior issues on the rise, okay? The animal's now at risk of losing its home um, or be pushed to the back and not dealt with. Um, you're, the animal's likely to start abnormal repetitive behaviors. If you do not start intervening in trying to redirect and change those abnormal repetitive behaviors, a lot of times they can turn into self-injurious behaviors, all right, such as eye poking. Um, we talked about this in the presentation in Montreal. It was a phenomenal two-day presentation. Um, phenomenal. And it's huge. It was full of videos and behavior change plans. And a lot of that was enrichment, training, case study, statistics, um, percentages of different in a wide array of different types of animals that show abnormal repetitive behaviors. Um, and it was full of um, how we used enrichment and training to change these behaviors. And all of that involved the three C's. Um, I've had people tell me before that enrichment does not need to be this complex. And my response was, that is not your choice. The animal will tell you. Okay, and the behaviors will show if undesired behaviors increase. Um, yeah, you're probably seriously lacking in uh, complexities. So um, this is Kronos. We watched him from the ground, and I have this on video. We watched him from the ground try to figure out how in the hell am I going to get there? And you could watch him think. He was sitting there and he was vocalizing. Burr, burr. And he's looking around and he's he's hopping to different perches and then he's looking up at that um, seagrass mat hop and then he saw him climb the side of the cage and then he flipped himself upside down hanging from the top trying to figure it out and I have a video of all of this unfolding and then me turning the video around and what you saw on the other side of the screens were all the volunteers just sitting here going holy cow <laughs> It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, 
you must come back to Montreal. There is much lack of English resources for pet owners. I will pay to come to your seminar. Um, cool. Yeah, we have a seminar coming up here in October. I'm also thinking about starting another workshop. We had a workshop last year that focused just on enrichment of all species. And we sat here, it was a two day workshop, and we focused on increasing complexity. And we would make things, and then we would go try it with um, a pig, a dog, a vulture. We had several different animals here for training at the time, so we were applying it to them. I would also like to have one, yeah, I talked about it last year, and everybody that was here said we'd be there in a heartbeat. Um, yeah, so I'm, this presentation I did in Montreal needs to be blasted across the world. Um, anyways, it was pretty cool. So let's move on. Yeah, get in touch with me. Um, all right, so here um, I'm Director of Training and Enrichment for Nature's Nursery, a wo local wildlife rehab center. Um, I help there, and I'm supposed to be going back out there and helping their staff and volunteers understand the importance of training and enrichment. Um, but here's some ideas they had come up with for, I don't know what this enrichment is for, so I see some smelt and some carrots. It's probably an opossum, a, a coyote, or uh, another, that could be many things. Okay, I thought that was fabulous. We do this here as well. Oops, okay, so I'm trying to incorporate all different animals in here showing levels of complexity and if I'm showing a certain animal think how this can apply across the board um, Mary Florence says does tail biting in a cat fall into behaviors as a result of boredom and lack of mental stimulation the vet says he has dementia the cat is 15 I think he has slowed down due to problem but he still seems sharp as attack to me um, I would think without knowing more, Mary, yeah, my red flags would be going up on that one, okay? I just did a free cat consult the other day with my optop optometrist because they gave me some stuff for free. So in return, they saw my shirt and they're like, what exactly do you do? And I told them, and they're like, we're having this problem with our rescue cat. And I was just like, bam, 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 bam. Here's how you can change environment. Here's how you can make the cat start engaging with your husband more, and uh, it's working. Okay, I'm trying to pay attention to your comments too. Um, okay, so this. All right, um, we posted this in the Parrot Project. This is, um, uh, this is what I was working with with Sam. This is a toy in which I, this is a blind, fully flighted bird, okay? A blind, fully flighted bird that hadn't been out of its cage in 16 years. Um, we increase complexity. This is Sam. Okay. Um, yeah, Melinda's here. She's in the Parrot Project. She said, learn this from the Parrot Project, keeping Sid involved, different foraging activities. Good. Um, so... I was working on levels of complexity with Sam. We showed this toy in the Parrot Project before he passed away when I first implemented it into his cage and his cage is still sitting there and that toy is right there. So I incorporated choice control and complexity. Okay, what I wanted to do because Sam couldn't see, I made it very easy for it to hang right when he would turn, he was gonna hit this toy. And what I did is I kept, um, he already knew how to forage for his AV kick. That's right for his food through those bigger holes, okay? And this toy, when he would touch it, the top would spin, the bottom would spin. So they're, he's reaching for it, and whatever he got a hold of has already turned, all right? Um, he did not like pine nuts. I needed him to like pine nuts, okay? I was trying to get him. He was on a pretty healthy diet when he came here from a helping wing rescue. Um, 
but I wanted to keep that advancing and changing. Um, so he could get to those holes and food was pushed deep into that hole. The smaller holes were uh, where I would put straws, paper straws. We cut paper straws up like this big and shoved them in those smaller holes and filled them full of pine nuts. So he could, he would once in a while, because this toy spun at the top and it spun, spun, spun at the top and it spun at the bottom. It was constantly moving and, and increasing and he was so into it. I have the videos where he's turned around and he's trying to grab it with his back foot and he would get a hold of it and he'd get a hold of that damn straw full of pine nuts and he would <laughs> those out there. But what I saw starting, to, so those straws would kind of poke him in the face too. And he, because they stuck out so far from the uh, block of wood that he had to get those straws out of the way in order to get to the food. Look at that toy. There is not one straw on it. He got them all and look at the wood. He's already started destroying it to get further, deeper back into the wood to get the food. Um, yeah. So, um, and what I also noticed is he started eating pine nuts. <laughs> He started eating pine nuts, and I needed something very healthy for him. But he was a chow hound. He would eat almost anything. Yeah, there were so many levels of complexity there. I even have another toy that's attached to the side of the cage. Okay, um, so I put this one on here for Kramer and for those working with zoo animals and maybe reptiles. Um, this is what we did for a Von Der Decken's hornbill that we had here for training probably four years ago. That was Jason's bird. Um, your hornbills, uh, your animals, some of your uh, birds with longer beaks, your toucans, and even this could be applied towards an opossum, a ferret. Um, he loved... Yeah, uh, that's right. I just showed a lot of um, some shaping of Sam in level two. I forgot. I was like, Julie, you're in level two. How'd you know about that? And it's because I posted it there. Um, animals with these longer beaks, it's hard. You can't make a lot of wooden toys for them. Uh, so this is what we did for a Von Der Decken's hornbill. Their favorite treat, his favorite treat was mealworms. He could get them so easy. Um, but he doesn't have perfect for turtles. Yes, exactly, Julie. Um, as long as they don't eat the cardboard. Um, yes, I made that toy, Melinda. We make most of our enrichment here. Um, so what I did was I put mealworms inside of a cup and crinkled that cup. And, and instead of, he would come to the edge of the cage every morning, like, well, where's my food? Where's my food? And I would toss this, this is just a popcorn container with the mealworms inside, um, pushed in, and he would sit here. And instead of eating five mealworms in 2.3 seconds, he it would take him 15 minutes just to get one to come out. Um, but you, want, you don't want to make that level of complexity so hard that the animal does not, that it stops interacting with it, okay? Um, that's the importance in shaping because you can actually punish the very behavior you're trying to train. Here's a popular one here that's getting starting to get really pretty old with some of the birds. Um, but you could, you could give this to so many different animals, animals that pick up and use their hands, whatever that would be. Um, we order clothes pins, wooden clothes pins on Amazon. We order the paper straws by the thousands. Um, and then we cut them into quarters. We showed this in the Parrot Project. Um, this is what we do in the Parrot Project. This is what we do in the memberships. We break this down, show you how to shape it. We show ideas like this. Uh, we have Foraging Fridays um, where everybody shares the ideas. And I watch their ideas. You're welcome, Kimberly. Um, I watch their ideas and I always challenge them. What's your next level of complexity? 
How are you going to increase this next time? Um, yeah, Julie says, I'm always worried that something is too complex and you get frustration instead. That's something you have to watch out for. But small amounts of frustration are okay as long as it's solvable. And once it's solvable, um, move up to the ne next level of compl uh, uh, complexity because you also hear me say that studies show predictability does have its place and we do use it. But with predictability comes boredom, the same old toy. Once you have boredom, then you have a crow luring a pig to the edge of the cage. Then you have, um, you, once you have boredom, you have increase in abnormal repetitive behaviors. You don't change those abnormal repetitive behaviors. There's a, a good percentage of chance it's going to start turning into self-injurious behaviors, such as eye poking, mutilation, feather destructive behavior. And this is across, this is across all animals, you guys. All right. So then we take pine nuts. Oh, um, thanks, Jamie. Um, then we take pine nuts and we shove them into those um, paper straws. And then here's increased level, the level of complexity. Look what we did next. Boom. Yeah. We have these hard cardboard tubes that were donated to us. And also, like that. Some of these donations were given to an elephant sanctuary and they contacted us too saying, do you want some? Yes, we do. These are really hard um, core of paper. They're the, 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 the two, the, uh, the core in the middle. What, we, what I did was I took that cardboard tube about this big. This is a pretty in, intense level of complex, complexity for some of the parrots here. Very pretty rock. All right. So I took um, two inch by two inch, hey Milo, sorry you're not gonna be in my live stream today. Two inch by two inch cardboard boxes that are filled with crinkle paper and more treats. That is a conditioned reinforcer. All of our parrots here know that when they see that cardboard box, there's goodies inside. So what I then did was drilled holes in the cardboard tube and put these clothespins in there so they could not get to the cardboard box until they got those cart, the uh, paper clips out of the way. And then the um, paper straws are another conditioned reinforcer. They're a lure to lure the bird into this toy and to get them to peek their head in there and see the next level of complexity. What do you think about that? Um, Oh, thanks, Jeannie. Level one is helping me be a better volunteer for the dogs at the shelter. Yeah. Um, good. Okay. So next we got some, okay. Here's another level of complexity. We do a lot here with PVC. I love PVC because you can throw it in the dishwasher. You can stick, um, for the vulture, we stick, we feed nothing live here. Um, we stick frozen mice inside of PVC. She has to roll it around to get the mice out. And it's so, it's just the curiosity is so mentally stimulating for her. Okay. We use the PVC with the pigs. Um, we show that in the pig project. Um, we use the PVC for a lot of um, the wildlife that will come here for training. We show that in level two. Um, okay. So, the food in the paper cone cup, paper co cone cup in the PVC, twist those lids on. If you have an animal that can unscrew, and we do, we teach animals to unscrew things here. Be careful. <laughs> They'll take apart your building. Um, that is why we don't have a raven yet. Because <laughs> I'm like, no, this raven is going to be destroying center. Um, all right. And there's your level of complexity. There's Rico. He, Rico is one of our most advanced foragers of any animal we have here. And you know why that is? It's because I had Rico since he was five months old. He will be 15 in two months, and I'm always working with levels of complexity with him. Okay. Um, we do a lot of this. We do a lot of frozen stuff for the mammals. Um, that's what was in that Kong in the beginning um, that was, uh, 
that Kong in the beginning with the lemur. We were trying to get her to use her hands. So we injected that Kong with banana baby food and another level of complexity. So then we had her using her hands and really manipulating this Kong to get that baby food. Then we started putting poly rope in the middle and then freezing it. So now we have a frozen Kong that can hang from the center of the cage. And there's this lemur thinking, how do I get to that? Okay, problem solving skills, right Rico? Problem solving skills. Ice cube, very simple, all right? But ice cubes holding, ice cubes are heavy, okay? Make your dishes deeper, all right? Ice cubes are heavy, they're full of food. The pig already knows, drop them in a, in a bucket or a deeper dish of water so that food sinks and that pig has to get his head under the water and start to manipulate to try to get those ice cubes. Um, you can do that with a lot of food. That's pretty basic, pretty simple, but um, you can continue to build levels of complexity, okay? We use a lot of these. Um, they're used heavily with horses, if Shelly's still in here, heavily with uh, zoo animals. They're called jolly balls. You can get them from your local tax shop, all right? Um, what I was doing, this was for the mammals. This was for Milo is right below me. This was for, um, dogs and pig. Okay. I don't want, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. I don't want to drill that hole right there in the middle because that's where the food is likely to come up. If I was just introducing, thanks Beth. If I was just introducing um, this to an animal. Yes, maybe I would put it right in the center. So it's very easy to figure out, oh, I touch it, I move it, food falls out. But then as increased levels of complexity, I'm putting it, so this is in the shape of an egg. I'm putting it way up here and way back here. So Milo would roll it and it wouldn't come out. But he already knew this is a conditioned reinforcer. There is food in this toy. Um, and so he would now yes, he would now have to tip that egg up on its side, which is harder because it won't stay up like that. But when you push it up like that, bink, there's an intermittent schedule of reinforcement, and then the egg falls back over again. That's a pretty cool toy. I wonder where the heck that is. Um Okay, and this is just basic. This was a dog we had in for training. This is Usher. Um, in between training sessions, if I didn't keep him enriched, him and um, Cash, the other dog with them, would start really um, playing a little too hard. So I said, okie dokie, we're going to teach you to forage. Um, very basic. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Because, yeah, that's my last slide. Um, next week, well, I've got to figure out something to do because I'm going to be in Chicago again. I'm going to go see Sue at the Field Museum because I missed her last time. But I'm giving a workshop, um, co-lecturing Dr. Jason Crean's uh, for the second year, his zoo genetics and biology course. Um, so... I will continue to work with his students. I'm going there next week to give a presentation. And Jason Cran has been generous and open, opened up the four hour uh, workshop that I'm giving on Saturday to the public. Um, this is next week. If you are interested in going, I would highly suggest you do that as soon as possible before he shuts it down. Um, I will be live streaming some of that bits and pieces here through my memberships and my projects. Um, so I look forward to seeing you next week in Chicago. And um, if you like some of the content or more detail of what you see here, this is what we do. I live stream my services for the public. Level one, companion animal people. Level two, a little more intense. People who want to understand how to use applied behavior with an array of animals. 
Um, it's for people thinking about getting in the field, people who just want to do better. Um, there's a lot of professional trainers in there, board certified behavior analysts. Then we have our projects. We have several different projects, pig project, deaf dog project, snow project, and the parrot project. Uh, the parrot project is skyrocketing with at 141 member subscribers right now and going strong. Um, for those of you interested in the workshop, this is the workshop. If you go to our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com, um, Dr. Deb Jones and I are giving this uh, two-day workshop the second week in October. And she was here, was that last weekend? I think so. Um, we're putting the content together and get ready to work, okay? Um, why did I post coffee with critters? Anyways, after that, let's see, I think it's April 27th. We're having um, a half a day workshop here uh, for people wanting to know how to use the pet tutor. This is a remote control treat training device. We're gonna um, do live streams in our memberships showing the array of animals you can work with and how to do different behaviors. Uh, we need to get this up on our website if you're interested in the live stream or attending. Um, email me. You can reach me at laura at the animal behavior center.com. Let's see what's next. Oh, I'm getting ready to write another newsletter and blog post, and I will go into detail. That's something very hard for me to talk about right now, but I need to get the information out there for anyone it can help. Um, and you can get that through our email newsletter, which, which is located here on the animal behavior site. Facebook page. I'm going to start working on that. Yeah. Hey, Frank. Yay. Um, this is one of our most recent subscribers to level one. Um, good to have you. Just got you put in there this morning. Um, so if anybody has anything they would like to contact me about, um, watch for our nonprofit. It's in the works called Sam I Can, um, our C4AW.org collaboration. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at Laura at the Animal Behavior Center.com. Um, I'll let you know what I'm doing next week. I may just go live in Chicago. I don't know. Maybe I do it on Saturday. Maybe I do an afternoon with the critters on Saturday from our presentation. How about that? Okay. All right. See you guys. I will see you guys next week. Thank you for your continuing support, and uh, I appreciate you guys. All right, take care.